it has been not one, not two, but three weeks since my last Ambernic review. I'm just kidding, it's been four weeks since the RG Cube came out. Wouldn't you say it's about time they came out with a new product? Well, would you look at this? This is called the RG40XXH. It is a new H700 device from Ann Burnick that runs the same software they've been releasing on their lower end budget devices in the last few years. And it comes in some fun colors. We got blue, DMG gray, and there's also a black unit available. Coming in at $65 to start, you're getting a four inch screen here and you're getting the lights and uh, some of the aesthetics from the RG Cube, but in a very nice lightweight form factor. Is this week's Ambernic device worth your hard-earned cash? Let's hop in. H700 devices from Ambernic have been done to death. We have a wide variety of videos on our channel if you wanna check out what this chipset can play, what it can do, but a quick overview of that is gonna be that it plays up to PSP, Dreamcast, and Nintendo DS with different handhelds like the RG28XX, famous new clamshell that's been very popular, the SP, 35XXH having a 3.5 inch screen, and as well as the verticals, the 35XX, 35XX Plus, 35XX 2024, so many H700 devices. Today I'm gonna be focused on just the four by three aspect ratio devices. This came in a box much like any other. Inside you will find not a screen protector this time. The screen does not appear to need it. It looks fairly well covered there. There was a 64 gig internal SD card, but this one did not come with an external. You can order one. It will likely come with games and ROMs. And we're gonna talk about Portmaster and that kerfuffle in this video as well. There's an instruction manual and a charge cord. Ambernic has sent me the DMG and also the blue model for review. And man, that blue really pops. Look at this. There is an accessory option for a case. It's pretty standard, slips right in there. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, out of these two, they're both really nice colorways. I like the matte plastic on both of them. The blue just especially pops. D-pad feels fairly standard so far. The face buttons feel just like the RG Cube. In fact, much of the quality here feels in a similar vein to the RG Cube, which is a much more expensive device, mind you. This is rocking the T820 and comes in for around $170. This is very lightweight in comparison to some other Ambernic devices. The downside being that you're gonna get a just slightly smaller 3200 milliamp hour battery. Tweet XX has a 3100 milliamp hour. The SP has a 3300 milliamp hour. And then the H has a 3300 milliamp hour batteries as well. So just 100 milliamp hours less, but you're trading off for getting a slimmer form factor. And this does look similar that's not the only upgrade here. Also with these systems, you're seeing an upgrade to a 64-bit OS, which brings in some fun options, more ports will work on this. Taking a quick look at buttons and sticks. So these are gonna be non-haul sticks, standard switch style. It's nice to see them starting to move away from the inline design here to these stacked shoulders. So we have clicky, it's quieter than the inlines on the H and not as loud as the cube actually. And then you also have clicky, kind of thocky L2 and R2. Yeah, face buttons feel good with the play and travel. Volume up and down, USB-C up top, HDMI out, reset, power, two USB slots down below, and awesome to see that 3.5 headphone out on the bottom, down firing stereo speakers, and a nice thin lightweight form factor. And that's the first thing that really sticks out at me is like, while there's no ergonomic bump out or anything, it feels so lightweight that it, it's easy to kind of grip. This might be a handheld that does well with just an added grip accessory, something to grip onto. But again, with the weight, uh, it feels good. This almost kind of copies the Trim UI Smart Pro. Very similar shoulder design. I would say I like the face buttons and D-pad better on the Anbernic. Pretty slim and the sticks are recessed. You get good motion on those. 640 by 480 display. You have a function button on the left and then start and select on the right. And yeah, very matte plastic, not glossy whatsoever. Let's go ahead and turn these bad boys on. So you do have fun LED lights. That's kind of a cool addition that will drain your battery just a bit faster. And there is a rumble and vibration motor. Uh, if you're wondering when you can get this, this is out on July 12th at 3 a.m. Pacific this Friday, and it's $5 off for the first 72 hours or three days, and there is the DMG, the blue, and the black. You can also pick this one up for the same price, $65 plus shipping, all the way up to $105, depending on your specs and what you want with it. If you want it with an extra 256 gig card, if you want it with the case and all the, and all the trimmings, but I would say you're probably pretty solid with that $65 one and you can put your own games on it. 
Another option would be to wait and get it on Amazon. It'll be there very soon. Moving on back down to software. So we're gonna use the Blue Boy because I think the lights look cool with it. As far as the battery goes, I'm at about, I'd say about 80% battery right now, 85%. So a new addition in the software now is this LED setting and you can enable the lights on, turn them off. You can change the effect. Um, you can use L1 and R1 to quickly hop up and down in values. It goes all the way up to 255 and that is freaking bright. But I love this. I mean, this is, it's just a fun little thing to add on. It's not necessary at all, but it, it is kind of cool. And there's different things. There's always on chase one, which I really like monochromatic rainbow. If you want just a rave party, multicolor rainbow, which is the default when you first unbox it. But yeah, I think this with the blue looks really nice. Russ from Retro Game Core discovered that you can run other custom firmware on this right on day one, including MinUI. So we're not going to do that today, but that is something you could do. I really like having the lights, and so the custom firmware right now will not have access to the lights. So I'm and I'm pretty cool with stock. They've been doing a pretty good job with stock. And you can skip game room for the most part. A few systems might be better in there. Systems like PSP are going to be better in there, but majority of content is just going to work better for you in RetroArch directly. So just go there and let's turn the brightness down. So as usual, it gets fairly bright at level five. And I noticed in my playing at night, it was nice and dim at level one. Really nice performance there. And yeah, so having a four inch screen is kind of like a luxury now on this but all the 4x3 content is going to look awesome. N64 especially, I found to be a lot of fun on here. One issue I've noticed with the device is, as far as temps go, the right side is getting warm. It gets noticeably warm. Awfully warm, and we'll take a look with the temperature gun after we've been playing a little while, but a very high quality screen. Viewing angles are not too bad. Nice IPS, fully OCA laminated again. These sticks are nothing to write home about, I would say. The range of motion feels good. Face buttons are very responsive. Oh, D-pad's a little bit too responsive. But yeah, N64 looks pretty good on here. Let's take a look at another game. So here's your function button. Function plus start is gonna quit your game. And looking at some Nintendo DS. And might as well test those speakers, here you go. Fairly loud, and here's something that I like to do lately: is their speaker buzz. It's it is there, but it's uh, very minimal. Not like it is on the SP, which is a little bit louder. It's a little bit louder on the on the right speaker. Interesting. D-pad pivot feels a bit better on this game. Lego Star Wars. And you have access to your options if you just press the function button. Teeny tiny, but there's Drastics options. And again, if you want to see more gameplay from this chipset, we have dozens of videos on our channel uh, to watch. Many dozens to enjoy everything this chip can do. And what's nice is that if, you, if this one isn't doing it for you, well, there will be a new variation on this in a few weeks' time. So, you don't know what, but there will be something. There's literally something for everybody in this hobby. Whatever your, your particular tastes are, guarantee there is a handheld that is made for you. So here's some more examples of 4.3 content. PlayStation 1. And the colors are looking a little bit washed out here, so what I'm going to do is save my state, quit, and we're actually going to turn down the brightness just a bit more. And I have to say the viewing angles, not bad, but not the best. Pepsi man. So there you go. Now you can see the nice crispness of the panel there. So yeah, PS1 feels really good in here, especially with the fact that the joysticks are on the bottom now. So that's one thing I wanna call out for retro systems, for things this is really gonna excel at, having the D-pad up top is 
the best. It is, thank you, Ambernic, for putting that up top, much like you did on the previous H, the 35XXH, which I would definitely say this is more ergonomic and feels better to hold than this. However, this doesn't have nearly as much heat coming off of it, and so I have to wonder how they redesigned it or why they let this go to market with how warm the side gets. It just gets a bit uncomfortably warm for the kind of power that we're drawing from here. It shouldn't be getting that warm. All right, so apparently, in possibly a response to the 35XX SP, which people were concerned with the battery being over the CPU, now they've moved the battery off the CPU, meaning the heat on the right side there from the bare naked CPU is just transferring straight to your hand. This is a size T0 hex screw here. This is at least one of the easier handhelds to open up. Okay, it's just those four screws, it looks like. Well, you could put some sort of heat sink on, maybe a thermal pad right on the CPU if you want to cool the CPU down. The heat still is going to need to go somewhere. So, and it looks like there is some reflective material. So this is doing a basic job. It just needs to be beefed up where the actual CPU is. So one fix is cutting a piece of about one inch off of this thermal pad. This is called a minus pad eight made by Thermal Grizzly. Got this on Amazon. I'll link this in the description. Fairly thick pad here. And again, I cut off about one inch or so. And I placed that directly over the CPU in here and then played for a little while. And what it did for me is instead of transferring heat directly straight to my right hand there, it spread the heat out a bit more evenly across the back, making it more comfortable to play overall. So, well, again, I don't know the long-term consequences or effects of doing that, but that is something that has made this playable for me. As far as the D-pad fix, again, you can use a little bit of electrical tape to block some of the false diagonals. And I have a video up on our channel where I walk you through the fix on a similar Anburnic device. So check that out. Although I don't think the D-pad is too bad or terrible as is, uh, but if you want to get it just as good as possible, you can try that fix. I'll make sure to link that as well in the video description, along with uh, the parts I have here to do these fixes. Very small black bars. So yeah, PSP not too bad in here. And again, this video is not for benchmarking this CPU kind of know what we can do here. But it's nice to see how they've configured things. And they've taken the time to do overlays for some of the systems too. Ah! So yeah, Dreamcast looks good on here too. Game Boy, one of my favorite games, Amazing Tater. So they do take the time to put overlays, usually when there's black bars. So that's a welcome addition. Look at that. Cool. And this does come with lots of different systems. So the ports issue. So unfortunately, the review units here shipped with the port files for a couple of games. Shredder's Revenge, Shovel Knight, and I want to say Celeste. So while these are shipped on the review units, Ambernick has said they've heard the outcry from the Portmaster dev team and they are not going to include these on the on the retail units. Now, there are still lots of ROM files on here, which is a giant uh, iffy kind of gray area there, but you're not going to find first party Nintendo games on here. So they are kind of avoiding some of the major avoiding some of the major perfuffles with this. But luckily with Portmaster, you buy the game on GOG, on Steam, what have you, get the files. Celeste is like a dollar right now and just drag them over to this and it will work. Come back here, Strawberry. And it's a little bit of a loosey-goosey D-pad. First thing I notice is my thumb kind of slide against that joystick as I'm trying to do this. So placement both on the left and the right are a little, we could have these maybe a little bit further down. 
so we're not bumping into that joystick when we're hitting these buttons. You lose. Let's try it again. I mean, I kind of have to button mash to get it going. Yeah, that's, yeah. No, 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 no. That's not gonna be it for me. You can, let's check for fingerprints. So now it's been getting kind of hot and sweaty and look at that, that is clean, that nice matte, good feeling shell, high quality plastic there. All right, let's get out of here. So what did you think of the RG40XXH from Ann Burnick? Is this one you're interested in? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to pick this one up, it is $64.99 for the first 72 hours. Again, afterwards, it's going to hover around 70 bucks. But you know, it's fun. The fun lights, I like that. Face buttons, tried and true, Ambernick style, work well. Joysticks, no complaints there. They work totally fine. Kind of clicky, loud, L1 and R1, but not a deal breaker for me. It's nice to have stacked shoulders, even though we're seeing those be clicky digital style. That's okay. Screen, nice, beautiful, bright. OCA laminated IPS with decent viewing angles, not perfect. The layout's nice, the colorway is great. Speakers get nice and loud, but unfortunately it gets so freaking warm. It gets so warm. This is just a pre-production issue. I'm gonna let our rep know and say, hey, take a, take a look at the, at the heat output on this. This is a little nuts, but beyond that, you know, down firing speakers do sound good. I like that the headphone jack is down below. I love that the D-pad on this model is up top. So it's a nice little bit bigger, taller option compared to the 35XXH, that four inch screen being nice to have for the extra space. But battery life, very on par with other H700 devices. Realize though that standby time is not perfect. It's going to drain because it turns the screen off, turns the speakers off, but it still burns that battery in the background a bit. So take that into account. But playing on this, it has a nice slow drain. You can see we started out at around 85%. We're still at around, I would say 80%. So we really haven't dropped much. Performance is on par with all the other devices that I've used so far. The same exact settings and expectations can apply here. I'm just not, I don't know. How do I say this? I have had more joy, I would say even with the light bleed, I've had more joy with the cube. Yes, it's more expensive, but that's not the thing. I've had more joy with the SP, even though I don't love the buttons on there. I, I think that that's fun. 28XX, loved this one, love it. 35XXH, love that one. 40XXH, with how hot it gets, it's kind of a non-starter for me. It's just, sorry, and that's just me. Maybe it's just a me thing. Maybe in the winter time, it's great to have a hand warmer. But to me, you are paying $65, you could be buying something else. Might I recommend, if you don't mind, the one-to-one -one aspect ratio, the RGB 30, 4.3 content still looks great on here. And uh, there's so much fun customization options for that. Or even the ARC 353PS. A little more power, get some PS2 and GameCube going a little bit on your Retroid Pocket 2S. Spend a little bit more, you could get something really nice. Or if you really want that four inch screen and you want just pure quality all the way around with some of the best custom firmware and longest battery life, pay a little bit more money and get yourself an RG405M. This thing still rocks. And even though the stick is up top, it is just still awesome for retro systems. And this has a T618 inside of it, so it'll play as well some GameCube PS2. Oh, but yeah, I'm not hugely feeling this one so far, guys. I do like how lightweight it is and the ergonomics I like on it. I feel like there could be better. Let's wait a few weeks. What's what's next? What's coming down the pike next? Let's find out. I wouldn't say this is necessary buy. And for me today, you know what? It's not a recommend for right now. We'll find out what the rest of our team thinks. Stay tuned on our website for written reviews from our team, as well as Zoo from Zoo reviews on our channel. The heat may not bother him. You may say, Stubbs, uh, stop your whining. What, 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 what are you worried about some heat? It gets a little warm, all right, whatever. What do you, what, what do you want to fight about it? Sit in front of an, an AC unit, sit in front of air conditioner. Don't sit in a 82 degree room trying to play a warm handheld now. All right, fair, fair enough. That's what I have to say about that. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay in the know for all of your favorite retro handhelds. And a special thanks to our channel members, patrons, and subs who make everything we do here possible. We couldn't do this without you. Thank you for your support. If you want to support us, our tiers start for as low as $1 on Patreon. Perks start for $3 and above on our Patreon, Discord membership, and YouTube. Join us in our Discord to chat and play games. We have an awesome Game of the Month program and so many fun things going on around the community. Check our website for awesome news and reviews views and we will see you on the next one. This has been Stubbs from RH saying take care of those handhelds everybody and each other.